as many homeless as Jesse is, there's so many things out to use. And a lot of us are coming through your home this day, Jesus, so I'm going to pray the word over our inboxes now and our inbox of Pastor and Jesse and pray for many of us who have come out from this day. And we have another outstanding work that we want to share with you on these mornings. But as always, we want to give an opportunity to survivors, those homeless people who just come and talk to us as we bring our inbox. <laughs> Father, we thank you, we praise you, we magnify you, we give you glory and honor. I appreciate it again, oh God, your blessings to see this day. And your choice again of us, oh God, to be used to your glory and honor. We pray, oh God, you will use us to, oh God, this day. Speak to us and through us, oh God. Give us ears to hear, hearts to receive, and a made of mind to apply your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Again, we thank and praise God for all things. We certainly thank God for you. And we're going to share with you on this morning from the book of Romans. We have another outstanding lesson, ignoring God's truth within us. How does yours read, Doc? Needing more than law. Needing more than law, okay? <laughs> and as always, we want to continue to encourage you to study out the material that you're comfortable with. We know that uh, yours may read a little different than ours, but God is going to bless us to come to that expected end. From the second chapter of Romans, verses 17 through 29. Is that what you got, Doc? Yes. Ignoring God's truth within us. Uh, Dr. Dancer, how do you feel about this one? Well, uh, based on both the topics that are used, uh, mm -hmm. especially the one here, needing more than law, mm -hmm. I, I think I'm thankful that it says needing more than law as opposed to needing something other than the law. Mm -hmm. Because I think too often we feel that uh, we can violate that law, we can do what we want to do, mm -hmm. um, live in the way we want to live, and still be in a right relationship with God. Mm -hmm. But that's not so. Although Jesus has fulfilled the law, there are still certain principles uh, that are a part of that law that are, that apply to us. We have to apply those things if we're going to walk in agreement mm -hmm. with God. And we're told that two can't walk together except they be agreed. We've got to agree with him. Right. So we have to uh, respect that law. We have to, not so much all, the, I'm not talking about all the, the add-ons. Right. <laughs> you know, that uh, the, uh, the Jews put on it. Right. But the law that God gives, we have to respect that law. We're going to be in agreement with it. Right, right. And and I, I agree. In, in an attempt to kind of tie the two together, you know, mm -hmm. we need more than law, and then we talk about the truth uh, that's within us. And I, I think by nature, uh, the nature of the truth that is within us, you know, kind of establishes the laws as well. Uh, as that, we that's right. Yeah. And in the, in the, in mm -hmm. that's what the lesson, you know. Uh, some things even that we might not have a law, or the, or the Gentiles didn't know the law, but they saw the things of, that was obtained in nature. And that it itself became a law unto them. Yeah, you know? last week's lessons told us that. Right, that, yeah. exactly. So I think that we kind of tie the two together in, mm -hmm. in, in that regard. But as you pointed out, when we start talking about the laws, you know, we, we if, I, and I always said, Dr. Dance, if you need a law to, 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 to make you treat your neighbor right, then you need to be saved. You don't need a law. You just. <laughs> <laughs> if you're not saved, you're not going to abide by the law anyway. Exactly. So, <laughs> you need some salvation. You know? <laughs> If the only way you don't steal a lot, you know what the case may be, is because the law tells you not to do it. Then there's a need for some conversion. That, that's yeah. the key, I think, is is, is accepting uh, that power that converts us. That yeah. actually makes a change within us when Christ comes into our life. Mm -hmm. Like you say, I mean, there there are laws all over this nation. <laughs> yes. You know, and and they're broke every day. Yes, yes, they are. So it's not the law. Again, it has to be the attitude and spirit we have to abide by whatever laws there are. Mm -hmm. And for us to, uh, to to really have a spirit of, obe of obedience, we really need Christ out of us. We need to be saved. You know, and ironically, the way you've just made mentions the laws all over the nation, and 
and many times the ones that are creating these laws are <laughs> well, the biggest law breakers. Exactly. <laughs> and that's exactly what we have here in our lesson on today. You right. know, simply, <laughs> simply because you're given to be a keeper of the law, you know, or the law has been entrusted unto you, uh, doesn't mean that you're better than I am or I'm better than you are. Right. You know, you're still under the law just like I am. That's you right. Know? So we, we have to understand that as well. And as you pointed out, Unless there's been a genuine conversion, a genuine relationship with Christ within you, you're not going to keep the law anyway. You know, and, and, and I, agree, I agree with what you're saying. And, and in addition to that, we're told that just being aware of the law actually puts more responsibility on you. Yes, it does. Because to know to do right. Yes, it does. And then choose not to do it, you have yeah. purposely sinned. Mm -hmm. And you're going to be beaten with many stripes. That's right. Oh, God. And then on the other hand... <laughs> Not knowing or being ignorant of it doesn't give you an excuse either. No. Because as you just said, and last week the lesson told us, mm -hmm. that everything around us, yes. even nature, uh, yes. proclaims, yes. you know, that there are certain laws and principles that have to be followed. So exactly. the only way out of this or the only way to to, to really um, function in this is, is as, as you were saying before, is to be saved, be in yes. agreement with Christ. Yes, yes. You need to get him in your life. Right. Ignoring God's truth within us, and as, again, continue us that I'm sure that you're reading. Uh, we know it might read a little different. From the book of Romans, one of Paul's most magnificent writing, the second mm -hmm. chapter, verses 17 through 29. Dr. Like, that's what you read for us, please. Behold, thou art called a Jew, and retest in the law, and make us our boast of God, and knowest his will, and approve the things that are more excellent, being instructed out of the law, and are con confident that thou thyself art a guide of the blind, a light to them which are in darkness, an instructor of the foolish, a teacher of babes, which has the form of knowledge and of the truth in the law. Thou therefore, which teacheth another, thou uh, teachest not thyself. Thou that preachest a man should not steal, does thou steal. Thou that says a man should not commit adultery, does thou commit adultery. Thou that abhors idols, does thou commit sacrilege. Thou that makest the boast of the law, thou breakest the law, Dishonoring God, dishonor thou God. For the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles through you as it is written. For circumcision verily, verily profited, if thou keep the law, but thou be a breaker of the law, thy circumcision is made uncircumcision. Therefore, if the uncircumcision keep the righteousness of the law, shall not his uncircumcision be counted for circumcision. And shall not uncircumcision, which is by nature, if it fulfill the law, judge thee who by the letter of circumcision does transgress the law. For he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly, neither, neither is that circumcision which is outward in the flesh. But he is a Jew, which is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart and the spirit and not of the letter, whose praise is not of men, but of God. Amen. Thank God for the reading of his holy and helpful words. Behold, thou art called a Jew. And rest in the law and makest thou boast of God. Because God gave them the law does not automatically make them better than everyone else. Okay. As we said, being aware of it yes. is one thing. Doing exactly. it is something else. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so you've been given the law and making thou boast of God and knows his will and approve the things that are more excellent being instructed out of the law. And art confident that thou thyself art a guide of the blind, a light of them which are in darkness, and instructor of the foolish, a teacher of babes, which has the form of knowledge and the truth in the law. Mm -hmm. Amen. We mm -hmm. have been given the law, or they have been given the law. Right. And uh, they have been given the task as well to instruct them, the babes, and, mm -hmm. and the open blinded eyes of the foolish, and... and uh, you know, now that you have been given this opportunity, you've been given this task, if you will, uh, to be a spokesperson for the Lord, if you will, okay? uh -huh. uh, does that make you any better than they are? Or does that excuse you of keeping the law? No, it, it, it makes you more responsible. Yes, yes, it does. Yes, it does. It makes you more responsible yes, to, uh, to abide by those things that you know. Mm -hmm. And this is Paul's argument when he goes on to say now, Thou therefore which teaches another, teachest thou not thyself. Thou that preaches a man should not steal, do you steal? <laughs> <laughs> but you know, sometimes, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
sometimes because you have been put in a position, Dr. Dad, so it kind of it kind of makes us feel as though we we become ex exempt uh, from the responsibility <laughs> of the position. Am I make myself, am I make myself clear? Yeah, yeah I, I understand what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, there's a saying uh, that that a couple sayings that uh, uh, one's man's trash is another man's treasure. That right. beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Mm -hmm. And I think even with with, with stealing, you know, uh, okay, you pull a gun on someone and you uh, through some strong arm tactic, you take something from someone, mm -hmm. or you break in, in the middle of the night and take something from somebody while they're going away. You're going, okay, you're a thief. Mm -hmm. But to cheat on my taxes or to, um, well, <laughs> you know, okay. so so I've defined you. Mm -hmm. You were a thief. You shouldn't steal. I'm teaching you that you shouldn't steal. You shouldn't do those things. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, I'm I'm, I'm, I'm in my sly way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm doing as bad as or worse than you. Yeah. And what he's saying here is, if I if I'm going to teach you not to do it. Mm -hmm. Shouldn't I not do it myself? Well, this is true, and we know the answer to that. But, but, <laughs> but after all, now I am a Jew. I've been given this law. You know, I, I, I I'm above this. You know, my job is to teach you. Well, well, I'm, and I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not pull a gun on nobody. <laughs> yes. I didn't bring anyone's home. Yes, exactly. I didn't carjack anybody. Mm -hmm. <laughs> see, all those, see, we, we, I, we, even today, I think we are guilty of trying to categorize sin yes, we are. as a big sin or as a little sin. Yes. A sin that's damnable and one that's not so damnable. Mm -hmm. Like the white lie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But but the Bible tells us that 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 all sin stinks in God's yes. nostrils. Yes. Yes it does. All unrighteousness is sin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So so my cheating on my taxes or my doing certain little underhanded things under the table uh, although it is not as blatant as what you do out there, it's still the same thing. It's still cheating. It's That's still right. It's still, it's still, thrilling, still cheating. That's right. And he says here, if, if I'm going to condemn you for doing it, yes. why am I doing it? Yes, 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 <laughs> yes, yes. But again, you know, we, 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 we feel that because I, I am, I'm chosen, yeah. it makes me exempt from certain things, you know. And, and uh, uh, because I am exempt from it, I can teach you not to do it, and I can... I can put you, as you pointed out, in that category as to where you are condemnable and I'm not, you know, because oh. I'm, I'm somebody. Oh, I, I find it was still well, yeah. well, yeah. Well, anybody that can make the rules can always win the game. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, for you to take a person's life mm -hmm. is murder. Yeah. And I condemn you for that. Mm -hmm. But by the same token, I can abort an unborn child. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. So... Is one any more right or more wrong than the other? Death is death. Killing is killing. Murder is murder. Yeah, uh, <laughs> without a doubt. All right. <laughs> 22nd verse reads, Thou that says a man should not commit adultery. Uh-oh. Yeah. <laughs> does thou commit adultery? <laughs> thou that abhors idols, does thou commit sacrilege? Thou that maketh thy boast of the law, though breaketh the law, dishonor thy God. For the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles through you as it is written. Dr. Denson, now that's a powerful statement. Yeah, that's an indictment, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah it is. It is. And, and, and I think that that is one that, that we should really uh, take personal at, at this particular juncture mm -hmm. in our walk with the Lord. We can talk about the Jews and the law, and we know that God gave the laws to the Jews without a doubt. But when we start talking about we uh, are members of the body of Christ, we are saved and and we're representatives of Jesus Christ, and yet our lifestyle mm -hmm. tells a different story. Right. And, you know, we, we're blaspheming against our Savior. Uh, we're making a mm -hmm. mockery out of Christianity. Yes. And, and, and we're really bringing him to open shame once again. That's right. You know, and, and we need to stop and think about this. With, 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 with the attitude that we have as a, well, we don't, we don't believe like that over here, and we don't, <laughs> we don't teach that over here, and then we're not as fanatical over here as you all are over there. You know, holiness <laughs> is still holiness, Dr. Vance. Right is still right. Yes, and, and I think that we need to stop and think about that uh, because when, when we, you know, the same writer Paul on another case says we're living epistles. People right. read us. Mm -hmm. They watch us, and, and, and some people are genuinely watching us uh, as to what we should do, you know, trying to learn from us right. the life right. that they should live. And then there are others that are watching us trying to find fault, without a doubt. But the fact still remains that we need to be very careful of, of, of our lifestyle that, that we're living 
when we're testifying to being a child of God. And, and that's the key. I think we've said it here before, probably many times before on this on this podcast, that mm -hmm. whether we want to be an example to someone or not, we are. Yes, yes. We don't really have a choice in that. No, we don't. There, there are those that we know are watching us, and there are those that we don't know are watching us, and there are those we will never know have watched us. Yes. Mm -hmm. And as you were saying before, what we do at that time or during that period where we're being watched, uh, it uh, it influences those yes. to do yes. what we do based upon our testimonies. Mm -hmm. You know, we say we're saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, that we are holy uh, men of God, mm -hmm. and, and they accept that based upon our testimony, based upon our confession of such, a profession of such. Yes. And if we're doing certain things and we are who we say we are or they accept us as being who we say we are, mm -hmm. then why should not do the same thing? That's true. Why should not live the same way? That's true. So like you said, we got to be careful um, uh, in what we do. If uh, we are saved, we should purpose to live a safe and sanctified life at all times mm -hmm. before every person. Right. Right. And we know we're not perfect, but we can't, we can't use this as an excuse we can't use that as an escape. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, we're not perfect. We, right. we do make mistakes. We sometimes stumble. We sometimes make errors. Mm -hmm. But but I can't keep making the same errors and mistakes over and over again. It's just, just trying to use that phrase as some kind of catchphrase. Well, yeah. I'm not perfect. Yeah. Well, no, you're not, but you should be striving to become perfect. Exactly. <laughs> but, you know, you you being a man of, uh, you use an administrative position in your, on your secular world. You're retired now. Mm -hmm. Thank God for the retirement. But uh, during the 40 some years that you were working in the administration, you knew within yourself uh, that, that that you cannot fraternize no. with your workers. Mm. You, you know that you cannot go out, y'all at the same bar and you're doing the same thing. And then right. on Monday morning or whatever the case may be, you, they come in, you expect them to obey you. Drop, you. you drop the hammer. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't work that way. <laughs> you know, it was the same way. You, you know, you out in the town with these people and then all of a sudden on Sunday morning, you're more holier than thou. Right. You know, then they're going to look at you as being hypocritical. You know? Which you are. Yes, Which yes, you are. You are. <laughs> Had, years ago, I had a fellow working for me, <clears throat> under me in management, and he came out from the ranks. Mm -hmm. It was a position that he, he desired, he sought it, and he did very well in it. And when he received that position, of course, he had been working among, you know, his yeah. peers for a long time. Mm -hmm. He got them all together and told him, and said, now he worked from 11 to 7, mm -hmm. that midnight shift. He told him, he says, friendship ceases at, at 11 <laughs> and starts again at 7. <laughs> so from 11 to 7, <laughs> I'm, I'm not your friend. friend. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> but still it's a poor example to set forth, you know, yes. only in church do I want you to do right, you know. Right. The key is at all times, whatever we're involved in, whatever we face in life, there are principles that we have to apply. Yes. Because of who we say we are. And more so, as you were saying before, because there are people that are watching who really mm -hmm. want to live this life, mm -hmm. who really want to please God, who are striving to grow and progress in their walk with God. And uh, they feel that we have uh, may have the experience and can help them in that effort, in that area. And I don't want to slip up. I don't, I, you know, I, Jesus said, you know, that, that, that if we cause a brother to stumble, mm -hmm. it'd be better than a millstone we're tied about our neck yes. and we were cast into yes. the sea. Yes. I don't want to do that. That's true. And, and you know, Dr. Dancer, in this day and in this age, people are looking for role models. And, right. and, and we know that role models are very scarce. That's right. And, and we look at the media nowadays, and, and you got a scandal here, a scandal <laughs> there, and scandal over mm -hmm. there. You know, I mean, there's scandals everywhere. And then the people are just becoming disheartened and, and just, just you, you know, they're, they're just falling by the wayside, you know, and, and it's bad when uh, there is no role model for anyone anywhere right. at any given time. And and yet we want to testify that we're saved and sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost and that would have might have burned fire and, 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 you know, and yet we're living in the valley, you know, it's, it's just... It's just <laughs> we're not even living in the valley. Yeah, no, no, it's all over time. <laughs> you know, and, 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 and as you were saying, we, we should never put a person on a pedestal. No, no, we never. shouldn't. We're going to compare ourselves with anybody, we should compare ourselves with Christ and the yeah. Word of God. So we should never put anyone on a pedestal. <clears throat> but there are people that do put forth their best effort, and we can, we can, we can, we can garner something from them. We can gain, some, we can glean something from them, living this life, mm -hmm. without um, uh, making an idol out of them or putting yes. them on the pedestal, yes. uh, per se. Mm -hmm. And 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 no one, I don't want anyone putting me there. I don't want to be there, <laughs> mm -hmm. but I do want to live a life in such a way that the good I do will benefit you, will help you. Sure. And if I should make a mistake, and where I make a mistake. That we can both learn from it. We both yeah. we can grow yeah. from that. And and that's the key. You know, somebody can see you. You know, and the one 
and, and take courage. You know, right. If they see you going through, you know, they're given an opportunity as well. How do you go through this? How do you accept this? You know, yeah. why, how do you know, allow this to bother you? You know, and, and uh, you know, it give you an opportunity to witness to them. Then you can tell them about the crisis in you. That's right. You know, but uh, when, when you, like I say, you, you're on the mountaintop on Sunday morning and down in the valley the rest of the week. People are not going to get it. Thinking you're on the mountaintop. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. And the instructions given us in the Word of God is that if we see our brother overtaken in a fall, mm -hmm. then we who are spiritual should restore him in spirit of meekness, yeah. considering yeah. our own selves. Yeah. So like you say, none of us are perfect. Again, it's not an excuse mm -hmm. to do anything we want to do. But where a person stumbles and falls, as you say, I should be courageous enough to come and see Dr. McGlown. Yeah. You know, it appears this way or that way. And we can sit out and discuss this and talk about this. Mm -hmm. And I trust we can both learn from this is when it was going on. This is true. What is when it's a fault? But now yeah. we now when it's a, a weekly lifestyle. Right. You know. Uh, that, that's a, a habit or a yeah. lifestyle. Right. Yeah, exactly. So I mean I I'm in I'm in agreement with you. So that twenty four verse again says, For the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles through you, as it is written. Twenty first twenty fifth verse reads, For circumcision verily profit if thou keep the law. But if thou be a break of the law, thy <laughs> circumcision is made uncircumcision. Doesn't mean anything. Doesn't mean it? a thing to you because you have been given the organs of, of, the, of the Lord. <laughs> if you're not going to keep it, doesn't mean a thing. Having a form of godliness. Yes, yes. But denying yes. the power uh, just, thereof. Uh, there is none that. You know, there's no point in putting on an act. There's no point in pretending. Yeah. You know, either you are or you're not. If you mean to go with the Lord or you don't mean to go with Him, yeah. make up your mind. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said, be either hot. A cold, mm -hmm. because you're lukewarm. I spew you out of my mouth. And war unto them that cause evil good. That's right, <laughs> and good evil. evil. You mm -hmm. know, so you got those who are taking pleasure in unrighteousness, as we've studied in the last week. You know, they they profiting they, by it. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. They know it's not right, but they're continuing it regardless. You know. Twenty-six verse reads: Therefore, if the uncircumcision keep the righteousness of the law, shall not his uh, uncircumcision be counted for? Circumcision, so it's, a, it's all a matter of uh, uh, who's going to keep the law. <laughs> you know, it doesn't matter where you come from, who you are, what's been given to you. Or are you going to keep the law? If you are fine, if you're not, then that's fine as well. Also, if you got the same function. You know, the Lord told Ezekiel, He says, "This is your responsibility: be the watchman." Mm -hmm. <clears throat> where you see danger, you have got to sound the alarm. You've yeah. got to let people know they're going yeah. the wrong way. Mm -hmm. And at least for the opportunity to to get things right. Mm -hmm. Now, that's all you can do. Is sound the alarm. Yes. What they do once it's sound is on them. Mm -hmm. And like you're saying, you know, just for me, for me to say that I am a child of God, that I'm a born again believer, that I'm living in agreement with God, my life has got to be the sounding of that alarm. Yes. Yes. You know, yes. And, and and if I if I stray, if I vary, then as we were saying a while ago, someone needs to be courageous enough, or bold enough, or love me enough to come mm -hmm. and say, mm -hmm. you know, you kind of string you're varying from yes, yes yes and we can sit yes. down and discuss things and like you say you know my convictions may be a little bit stronger than yours or yours may be a little bit stronger than mine mm -hmm. it's not based on convictions it's based upon the word of god yes yes exactly and 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 and, and your boasting and lifestyle should should match right you know that you should right. be able to compare the two you say you're a christian you say you're keeping the law then live like it that's you right know, that's bottom line you know live like it because you can yes because you can do it. Yes, you can do it. Yes, you <laughs> can do the it. The way of the transgressor is hard. Mm -hmm. We can live mm -hmm. this life. Yes. And because we can live, in fact, God's given us everything necessary to be successful in living it. Yes. So he has the right to require us mm -hmm. to live it. Yes, he's given us an, an example that it can be done, and he's given us the power to do it. That's right. You know, so we're, we're without excuse. Not that as we're running out of time. Right here, but we can, <laughs> <laughs> Dude's going to have him. Let me try to get through this. Uh, 27 verse, and shall not uncircumcision, which is by nature, if it fulfill the law, judge thee, who by the letter and circumcision does transgress the law. For he is not a Jew, which mm -hmm. is one outwardly, <laughs> neither is that circumcision, which is outwardly, outward in the flesh. But he is a Jew, which is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart, in the spirit, and not in the letter, whose praise is not of men, but of God. Mm -hmm. If any man be in Christ Jesus. <laughs> uh, he's a new creature, praise yes, God. So yes, yes, the Lord will empower you to live a life that's pleasing to him. He realizes that you cannot do this on your own, so he has given you an example, and he has given you the power to do that's so. Right. That's right. As right. always, we're going to give you an opportunity to get your unsaved loved one. Bring him around your TV. Dr. Dance is going to come back for one moment. 
He has something important he want to share with you. Stay tuned. One thing I hope that we've made plain today is <clears throat> it's not in what we do or what we don't do that puts us in a right relationship with Christ. As Dr. McLeod said just a moment ago, if any man or woman be in Christ, they are new creatures. The key is being in Christ, is surrendering to him, allowing him to come into our lives and make that change. Only he can make that change. Only he can make those improvements in us. And it's simple for us to get to that point. All we have to do is surrender our lives to Christ, invite him in, allow him to come in and live in us and through us. Mm -hmm. He will then enable us to live a life that's pleasing unto him. Outside of that, doesn't matter how much stamina we must have, we have how much fortitude or tenacity we exercise, how much uh, willpower we think we have, we cannot by any means walk in agreement with God or please him outside of being saved and filled with his spirit. Yes. God has done everything necessary for that to happen for us. He didn't put it on us. He doesn't require us to do anything other than to believe and accept what he's done. He's paid the price through the sacrifice of his son. Christ died at Calvary. Our sins are atoned for. All we have to do at this point is to confess Jesus as Lord, which means we give him control. We allow him to direct us and guide us. If you would do that today, I can assure you God will deliver, save, and set you free. Again, it's simple. Just believe with your, uh, with your heart confess with your mouth, repent of your sins, invite Christ in, and I can assure you at that point you're saved. And from that moment, that very moment forward, begin to uh, unite yourself with a Bible-believing and teaching church and grow in this way and prove faithful unto God. Yes, yes. God bless you, Dr. Dancy. And as always, I pray, I desire, and I wish that you're prospering and being healthy even as your soul prosper. God bless you this morning. God bless you. <laughs>